In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to do an AC installation. This home had just a furnace, no air conditioner. So we're gonna show you how to get power from our breaker box to the condenser, how to get the refrigerant lines out here to the condenser, how to install the furnace and the coil, and everything you need to know from start to finish. So let's get right to work. So here's our furnace that we're gonna be replacing. And this is an unfinished basement. So the process of getting our lines and uh, everything out to this outside. Our condenser is right here on the other side of this wall. And because of the level, um, our exhaust vent, the ground level is actually pretty low. So our condenser lines are gonna come out somewhere right in here where this hose bib is. And we'll show you that on the outside. So we're gonna start by getting this old furnace ripped out. This is a old um, natural draft, so there's no exhaust fan and it has a standing pilot, so it's gonna be a really nice upgrade, and there's no AC, so we're gonna be adding that here, and we're gonna be adding a little filter rack right there. So what we're gonna do to start, as you can see, this valve is ancient. We're gonna replace that. So we're gonna turn the valve off at the main meter, and then we're gonna turn our breaker off as well. So pretty straightforward here at the meter. We're just gonna turn this to where the valve is parallel with the pipe, and these two holes will line up like that so we're good to replace our valve inside and we've got our breaker shut off for the furnace all right so this is where our condenser is going to go directly on the other side of that spigot is where the furnace is maybe about 15 or 20 feet right on the other side of this wall so being as we're going to set our condenser right here on our new pad we're within six feet of the breaker panel so we don't have to have a disconnect as long as we're within six feet now, here is one of the hurdles that you'll have to get past if you're trying to do this on your home and you're wanting to add air conditioning. As you can see, all of our breakers are covered up. There's no open slots. So what we're actually gonna be installing is this guy right here. So you just have to make note of what type of breaker you have, pick up the same brand at Home Depot. And as you can see, this is a compact breaker. So we can have a separate, two separate 20s and a double throw 20 that as you can see can be used for 120 or 240. So our condenser only needs a 20 amp breaker. So we're gonna put our condenser on these middle two and then we're gonna open up two of these slots by using them for this. So these are the only two we'll need to disconnect. So we'll go ahead and take this cover off and we'll show you how to do that. All right, so here's what you'll see when you get that cover off got our two breakers down here that we're going to remove and uh, just be careful being as this is live you can turn off your main one if you wanted to but we're not going to worry about that um, so we're just going to pull this to the left and this will pop out as you can see this one was double tapped which is not technically up to code but I'll let her know about that we're gonna pull these out, get our new breaker put in, and then get this wired in. And then as you can see down here, we've got some knockouts. We're gonna use this knockout right here, just a half inch, and we're gonna run our whip through that knockout. And our whip is pre-wired and everything. You can get this on Amazon, super easy. Uh, I'll show you how to use these liquid tight fittings. They're real easy to use as well. So you simply tap this from the bottom side, wiggle it till it pops off, and you're good to go. Get all this junk out of here. All right, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make our connections on our whip. So we're just gonna just open this up. And this is extremely easy. So we're just gonna take the fitting that we wanna use. We're gonna slide the whole thing over And literally all we're gonna do is shove it in there and we're gonna twist until it stops. And that's as easy as it gets. This is completely liquid tight. So I'll go ahead and feed this up into our breaker panel and put our locking nut on. All right guys, so our new breaker is installed. We have the old wires that came from these two breakers on the outside ones. And we have our two new red and black on the inside. That's a connected 220 uh, breaker there. So we're gonna go ahead and power these back on. 
we're going to leave that off until we get this um, hooked up to our condenser we can put our covers back on and this portion is ready to go now if you are even more limited with space you can stack these you can get one of these breakers that has four single 20s and you can basically put one breaker here or even one breaker here that has the equivalent of four of these slots so they can be very useful so um, hopefully this gives you an idea on what you can do on your setup so here's our equipment we've got our two ton rude 13 sear condenser we've got the filter dryer that came with it and we've got our pad set here now we'll show you the coil and the furnace that we're going to be installing all right so we got our furnace in place got the old one out and i just wanted to show you our return um, set up here. So this is just going to be a one one inch filter rack They're trying to do this kind of on a budget. So We just folded these over onto the furnace and the same for the backside. I don't know if you can see that or not, but Then once everything is sealed up here, we're gonna slide the motor back in. Meanwhile, uh, we're gonna be pulling our line set through so we have our hole drilled We've got the suction line in we're gonna run the 3 8 line and our thermostat wire, and then we can go ahead and get our lines all fitted up. All right, so we got our new roll of three quarter um, copper and our insulation. This stuff is really durable. Um, it doesn't break like that elastomeric stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold one end with our foot and we're just gonna slowly start rolling this out. And this is really important that you do this on a really flat surface. Even if you do it on grass, and you hit like a root or something, you can definitely put a kink in this. So make sure it's really flat wherever you're rolling it out. Somehow this got twisted a little bit. I think we should have enough line set here for this job, which would be nice. Oh yeah. So we're gonna take this and we're going to feed it into our hole. We just drilled this hole here. So we'll get this fed in with our 3 8 and our thermostat wire. Well guys, it has decided to rain. So we have like a little makeshift thing here. So I'm out of the rain. But we got these fitted. So we did a 90 out, 90, 90, 45. Those are fitted and ready to be brazed in, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up our electrical. This should be really easy. So once I get the panel off, I'll show you how that looks when it's all finished up and connected. All right, so our electrical is complete. We just have our brown and our yellow from the condenser to red and white going into the furnace uh, right here with this line. We're gonna zip tie this and make all this look really nice. And then for our contactor, we just have our red on one side, black on the other, polarity doesn't matter, and then our ground on that lug bit. So everything is completely done in here. We're go we'll go ahead and put this cover back on. And the last thing we need to do out here is just solder our connections. So what we're gonna be using here is called Stay Bright 8. This is a specialty soft solder that's designed for HVAC lines. It has a much higher silver content, and it's not like your regular plumbing solder. Uh, this kit comes as a combo, so you get the flux with it, that's called Stay Clean by Harris, and then this is actually called Stay Bright 8. And the beauty of this is you can use map gas, you can use propane gas with a regular torch that you might have laying around the home, and you don't even have to wrap the valves because it does not get nearly as hot as brazing, and so there's much less danger of messing up some of those uh, o-rings in there or whatever or your schrader cores i never take those out never had a single problem the other advantage to this is it only gets to about 400 degrees so you don't have that soot that builds up in the line and you don't have to do a nitrogen flow like a lot of people say um, with stay bright 8. i've done this in the garage to verify and i love this stuff i've used it on tons of installs and I haven't had a single problem out of it. As long as it's done right and you have a nice seal, that's the biggest thing. You have to have a tight seal. So you want something like this. You don't wanna have a big, huge gap like that. Um, otherwise, it's just gonna flow through 
and it's not going to make a good connection. So we'll get these fitted. Um, we're gonna put flux on the male end only, not on the female side. We'll slip it in and then we'll show you this process. All right, so we're just gonna take our flux and we're not gonna go all the way to the end, just ever so slightly before the end. We'll go all the way around here. like that okay so we're going to slip our unit into place just like that got a nice tight connection we're gonna wipe all of this flux off and we'll get started we're going to apply the heat where we want it where we want this solder to flow to so I'm gonna heat it up here as we feed the solder in on the other side. And we're gonna do that on both pipes. All right, here's our finished product. So you will have these little black spots. Those actually come off if you scrub it enough. Um, but as long as you go around and you have good coverage, you are golden. Like this one, for instance, that's just some black kind of soot on the outside. So our lines are perfectly good out here. We're gonna insulate this one, make sure any excess flux isn't on there and then we'll be completely done out here. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. Our filter rack is completely done. We're working on the electrical. Um, we're gonna run new MC cable. So we're gonna do a junction box MC cable down to our box here. We got our coil set caulked on the bottom and we were able to use the back side of this existing ductwork, which was really nice. S clipped on the top and pookied top and bottom. And we just built this one piece. So we're just gonna attach it here and that should be it for the ductwork. All right, so this turned out really nice. I saw somebody else do a triple break and I thought it was kind of cool. We'll wipe that off, get all the smudges off, but everything is good and sealed. On these rude evaporator coils, it's very basic. We'll just make our connections, um, the three quarter to this line and three eighths to that line. And of course we're gonna do our filter dryer and then this bulb will attach at the 10 or two o'clock position on this pipe. So what we're doing right now is we're just gonna open this. Um, there's a bolt in each of these. We just took this bolt out and we should get a little spurt of air or nitrogen. That means that this coil is sealed and we don't have to worry about any damages in shipping. I try to make it a habit of checking that before I install it, but Half the time it ends up happening after we've already got it in place. So we're gonna do the same for this one and then we'll go ahead and get our lines fitted. All right, so we got our filter dryer installed. The arrow is pointing towards the furnace and I'll show you all the connections here. Connections look good there. Good there. Everything is good. We're going to install our bulb right now and then we'll insulate all of this. All right guys, so everything is done inside as far as the suction and liquid line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do our pressure test with our nitrogen. So we're gonna make sure these are both off. We'll open this up. Got plenty of PSI here. Uh, we just have our, our low side hooked up to the suction side there. And we're just gonna throttle in about 300 PSI. We're gonna start with 50 and then we're gonna shut it down. If there's a large leak, you'll know, but don't throw 300 PSI in 
only to find out that you have a good size leak and that you have to take it all back out. So if it was a pretty good size leak, you'd see it dropping steadily right now. I've had that happen in the past where I had just a little pinhole somewhere on my braze joint. Never had that happen with soldering though. So I'm real happy with the Stay Bright 8. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to 300 PSI here. Okay, we're gonna give this plenty of time to stabilize before we do our tightness test. If you have just a regular gauge set, you can pretty much just eyeball it and um, verify that you're not leaking anything. But this is a really fail safe method of checking your pressures or your tightness. So what we'll show you how to do is the tightness test feature right here on our gauge. So we'll give this about 10 minutes and then once it's stabilized, it'll drop a couple PSI, then we'll do our tightness test. All right, so we've stabilized at about 314. Um, we do have our low side clamp on the suction side. We're gonna hit our tightness test, press enter to start, and we'll see our timer start. As long as this stays at zero or above, we are golden. So we're gonna give this about 10 minutes and make sure that we're good to go. All right, so our pressure test is good. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy back on here. And we're going to get our um, our True Blue hose hooked up with our Navac vacuum pump. This is a four CFM battery powered vacuum pump and I've got the Milwaukee adapter. So we're first gonna put our Schrader core removal tool on the low side. So we'll show you once we have this set up and we'll get our vacuum started. So we're about five minutes in and we're already at 4,000 microns. So we're just gonna let this keep pulling. It's pretty wet out, so there's a lot of moisture in the air. So this might take a little bit long, longer than it normally does, but we're gonna make sure it's below 500 microns. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this valve off, do, or excuse me, we're gonna cut that valve off, do a decay test. And as long as we don't pass 500 within a 10 minute um, time increment, then we're golden to let the refrigerant in the lines. Now, for those of you that don't know this, every condensing unit that you buy comes pre-charged with refrigerant. Uh, a lot of people are misinformed on that. They think they have to go and buy refrigerant, but this comes with enough refrigerant for 15 to 20 feet of line set. I've gotten away with a little bit more, um, but anything beyond that, you'll probably have to top it off with refrigerant. Now, anytime you're using doing any of this you legally have to have an epa license i have a separate video that walks you through how to get your epa license and it's quite easy to do so check it out if you don't know about that all right so we flipped our breaker on and go ahead and turn the switch on here just i see that light in there so we're good to go we're gonna bump our thermostat up and test out our furnace go. Looks like we've got ignition. I'm going to adjust our gas pressure here in just a second. All right, so this one took a little bit. We're close to our 500 mark. I was hovering at like 2000 for a long time. So I let some more nitrogen in and purged it out and uh, started it again. And we're close to 500. So as soon as we get to 500, we're gonna close that valve over there, isolate, and then we'll be good to let our refrigerant in. So we just fired our furnace up. We've got a awesome temperize, 20 degrees of temperize, and uh, we're golden on the gas furnace just waiting for this vacuum to get done pulling and then we'll send the refrigerant in, check the AC side of things and this job will be complete. All right guys, we're at 558 and we're slowly lowering. I'm okay with that. We're gonna isolate this. As long as this doesn't move much above where it's at, we should be golden and we're gonna go ahead and let our refrigerant in. Normally I like to see it under 500, but it's so close that I don't think it's gonna make any difference, to be honest. And the tool that we're gonna be using here is this Allen 
uh, wrench set. So we're gonna start with our suction line and we're gonna open that up as soon as we isolate our micron gauge and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're just gonna open this guy up all the way. Then we'll do the liquid side and then we will test it out. All right, so we can go ahead and disconnect this guy. We'll throw our gauges on. Uh, first, we're gonna put our Schrader core back in, then we'll throw our gauges on and we can start it up. All right, so to put our Schrader core back in, we're gonna slide it in. We're gonna slide this piece on, tighten that up. And then as soon as we open this, you'll notice this kick back because it has pressure now. And with one hand, we're gonna push in. And I can't get my other hand in here, but we're gonna kind of hold pressure while we're turning. And we should see this gap get smaller as we tighten this. Once we feel resistance, we know that that core has been locked into place. Right there. Okay, so now we can pop it back out. And what we're gonna do is close this. We're gonna slowly take this guy off. And then we're gonna slowly open this and make sure that our core is doing its job. Really. Now we just take this guy off and we can hook our gauges up and check our pressures. All right, so as you can see, it's 58 degrees outside. So for that reason, I'm actually not gonna hook my gauges up to this. Um, we'll probably come back in the springtime when it's warm, or if we have another warm day, we'll check the pressures, but she's not even going to be using the AC, I'm sure, because she likes it pretty warm in there. So I do have it calling for cooling, so I can hear my contactor pulled in. So we're just going to bump this on and uh, see how everything works. Oh, no, 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 it's only cold when I do it. Pulling some heat out. It's nice and quiet. Well, guys, we're all finished up here. Everything turned out really nicely. We got our transition that turned out really good there. We've got everything wrapped here with our suction line, our filter dryer there. We've got our condensate drain going over to here, and our drip leg for our gas. So. Hopefully you guys uh, learned some things with this install. What's really interesting about this install is that the customer was quoted $20,000 to do this install. So new furnace, new addition of condenser and coil, adding the power outside at the unit, um, all of it, $20,000. So it just emphasizes how much you could potentially save. One, if you get someone like myself that's a one or two man show instead of a huge company where you're paying a lot of overhead. We were able to save her $11,000 and still get her an awesome product that has a great warranty. So it just emphasizes how important it is to do your shopping. Don't go with the first bid that you get, get a few bids. And if you feel competent in doing this yourself, you can totally apply for a permit at your local ordinance and do this work. You can order this equipment online have your work checked and it is 100% legal. If you'd like to see another AC installation video where we added AC to a home, check out this video right here and I'm sure you'll find that one informative as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.